Hello YouTube and welcome to my channel. This is the first video in a two-part series about my adventures with an APC UPS unit. In part one, I'll look at setting up a second-hand network management card, and in part two, why that eventually resulted in APC having to send me a replacement unit. So let's get straight into it. This is an SMX750i UPS. The main reason for choosing this 2U model was having eight outlets you can see on the right, and also the option to install a network management card currently covered up on the top left. At the time of shooting this video, the price for one of these units on the APC website is £575. I'm sure you can find them cheaper if you shop around though. I purchased my unit on Amazon in May 2017 and it was then only £389, so that is a considerable increase in the space of just over a year. I wanted to get a network management card or NMC for a while but I just could not justify the cost. APC's price is almost £289, but even on Amazon they never drop below £200. So just a quick recap. Current APC pricing for the SMX750i is £575, and APC pricing for the AP9630 NMC is £288, giving us a total of £863 for a UPS with network connectivity. Compare that to my original purchase of 389 and the NMC on eBay cost £75, so the total outlay was £464, almost exactly £400 cheaper than buying new at current prices. Normally I include a quick unboxing in my videos, but this was what arrived in the post from Romania, so nothing to see here. The NMC was well protected and the seller had restored it to factory settings, which was good but it did give me a few challenges which I'll get to shortly. One thing to check for is that the lower two connectors on the interface are longer than the others. That indicates that the card is hot swappable. So my first challenge was that I couldn't even get the card into the UPS. You can see from these still images that the slot on the right of the original blanking plate goes up much higher than the slot that came on the card. You can see the metal tab on the UPS here, obviously designed to prevent the fitting of non-approved cards. I used the blanking plate as a template and marked the area with a pencil. I then used a hacksaw and needle file to extend the slot. You can see the final result here which I think looks fairly neat. I actually completed the metalwork after setting up the card, and my initial solution was to remove the backplate entirely, which did work, but it was obviously not a long-term solution. To fit the card, just remove the two screws from the blanking plate, remove the plate, then slide the NMC into place and reuse the original screws. You can see much clearer here how much I had to extend the slot by to make it fit. You can also see the reset button here which I needed to use during setup. APC provide a device discovery tool available for free download on their website. The card needs to be connected to a network with a DHCP server to get its initial IP address. Then the configuration utility is supposed to find that and give you access to enter your own settings. However, I found that although the utility could discover my card, it would not open the web interface or allow me to amend the IP settings. I attempted to use the off network discovery option with a network cable connected directly into the card. This should find the card by MAC address and allow you to configure the network options manually here, but this didn't work either. I then tried using the same direct physical connection to initiate a Telnet session with the card. As I mentioned previously, I had used the reset button on the back, so the default login here is APC followed by APC. This allowed me to use the command line interface to set the static IP, subnet mask and gateway, 
which was finally successful. I wish I had shot some video of this, but this is the only still I took of the old style network interface before updating. You can see here that I had originally set the card up on its own entirely separate network, in case there were any security issues when plugging in an unknown piece of hardware into my network. The next step was to update the firmware on the card. There are three different versions on the APC website, so make sure you choose the correct one for your model. The download then requires to be unzipped. Then enter the IP address for the card and the login credentials and you're off to the races. The initial login is still the default APC account, which I recommend you disable once you have created your own administrator account. And here is the new web interface, which I think is nice and clean with all the controls within easy reach. So that concludes part one. If you found this video useful, please give it a like, and I'll be back soon with part two. Thanks for watching.